A divergent boundary is a type of plate boundary where two plates move apart or diverge relative to each other. When a divergent boundary occurs between two oceanic plates, a mid-ocean ridge forms. This is where new oceanic lithosphere forms. Mid-ocean ridges are also called spreading centers because of the way that the plates spread apart at these areas. A narrow trough or a rift runs along the axis of most mid-ocean ridges. The rift forms because large blocks of crust slip down as spreading occurs. That movement causes faulting which results in frequent small to moderate sized earthquakes. As the plates move apart, an opening is created which allows the ascendosphere to rise toward the surface and to fill that space. But as the plates pull apart, that load, the weight on the asthenosphere, it decreases, which decreases the pressure in the asthenosphere, and that leads to what is called decompression melting. The magma rises along narrow conduits, it accumulates in magma chambers as well beneath the rift, and it all becomes part of the oceanic lithosphere eventually. Much of the magma solidifies at depth, but some does erupt at the sea floor, forming submarine lava flows. These eruptions create new oceanic crust that is incorporated into the oceanic plates as they move apart. Mid-ocean ridges are elevated above the surrounding sea floor because they consist of hotter and less dense material and the underlying asthenosphere is thinner and bulging right beneath the ridges. The elevation of the seafloor decreases away from the ridge because the rock cools and contracts um, as it moves away from the ridge. Most divergent boundaries are beneath oceans, but a divergent boundary can form within a continent. And when you have divergence within a continent, it's called continental rifting, and it creates a continental rift. If continental rifting progresses, it can lead to seafloor spreading and the formation of a new ocean basin. The initial stage of continental rifting commonly includes a broad uplift of the surface as the mantle-derived magma ascends into the crust. That magma can melt parts of the continental crust, which produces additional magma. Increased heating causes increased expansion, which translates to further uplift. But that uplift is short-lived because the crust is being stretched, it's being pulled apart at divergent boundaries, so it will eventually begin to thin. The next stage of continental rifting is progressive stretching that causes large crustal blocks to drop down along faults, forming the continental rift. The drop-down blocks may form basins that can trap sediment and or water. Continued rifting causes decompression melting and the resulting magma from the mantle may solidify beneath the surface or it may erupt from volcanoes or long fissures on the surface. The entire continental crust thins as it is pulled apart and the elevation of that central rift decreases over time. If rifting continues, the continent splits in two pieces and a narrow ocean basin forms as seafloor spreading takes place. As the, as the edges of the continents move further and further away from the heat associated with that active spreading, the thinned continental crust cools and drops in elevation, eventually dropping below sea level. It's at this point that the continental margin ceases to be a plate boundary. A continental edge that lacks tectonic activity is called a passive margin. With continuing seafloor spreading, the ocean basins become progressively wider, eventually becoming a broad ocean like the modern-day Atlantic Ocean.